Hi, I'm Mark, that lazy machinist, and welcome to this first of the little quickie series of videos. A little quickie is a very short video that I put together quickly so that I can answer a specific question from one of my viewers. Today's little quickie comes to us thanks to Robert who asks how can I position my XY coordinates accurately on a mill if I don't have a digital readout? Well, as you can see, I don't have a digital readout on this mill and it's not going to stop me from positioning accurately some holes. It all starts with making sure that your part is well aligned. And here's what I want to drill. Three holes and I want to position them accurately. Hole A is going to be at one half and one half inch from the two reference edges. So A is 0.5 and 0.5. Hole B is going to be at one inch and one inch from my two references. And hole C is going to be at half inch and one and a half. So C, one and a half and 0.5 or half inch. This is going to cause some problems because as we can see with the lead screw when we use the collar to position my XY axis the only real hazard is backing up. Since we have three holes and I'm going to have to move at least one of the axis in both directions to get the three holes done uh, I'm going to have to find a way to solve that problem. We have to start by setting our reference surfaces and our lead screws to zero. So I'm using a ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge here to just come and snug up this quarter inch diameter center drill to the edge of my piece in the longitudinal or X axis. I can then set my graduated collar, the micrometric collar on my lead screw to zero. Once my x-axis is on zero I can retract my tool and remove my ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. I'm now going to have to move forward by half the diameter of the tool which is a quarter inch, so half of it would be one eighth or 0.125 inches, plus the thickness of my ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. So I'm going to have to move forward by 135 thousandths of an inch, and that is going to place the center of my tool axis directly above the reference surface of my part. So one full turn of this lead screw moves the table forward by 0.1 inches or one tenth of an inch. So I'm going to want to move forward by 0.135. So one full turn and 35 lines. So let's do it. One full turn, 110, 120, 130, 135. Now I can reset my scale to zero without moving the hand wheel. Now we can see that our tool center is directly above our reference surface in the x-axis. That's where we want to be. Our collar is set to zero and we haven't backed up. Our table has always been moving in this direction. So this is my official reference zero in the x-axis and I'm going to make a small mark right here with a grease pencil so that we can find our zero again because I've decided that it's my x-axis that I'm going to use to back up with. So I'm going to have to do the same setup in my y-axis or transverse axis. But before I do that I'm going to position my X for my first hole, the A hole. And that was 0.5. So 100 thousandths per turn of the lead screw here. That means five full turns coming back to zero. Make sure that you don't go past. If you do go past, 
back off one half turn and come back to zero again. You never want to back up just a little bit because all the slack in the lead screw is going to reflect on the positioning of your tool. We don't want to back up. If we do, half turn and come back, okay? So, here we go. So, one, two, three, four, five, and oops, I've gone a little too far. I'm not allowed to just back up. That's not going to work. I have to go a half turn or a full turn back and return to my fifth zero. And there we go. And now we do the same thing in the y-axis. So we're going to move our tool past the edge of our part, our reference surface, feed the tool down so that I'll be in interference, and using my feeler gauge, I'm choosing ten thousandths of an inch because it's easy on my brain, and I'm just going to come and not squish it, just come up and snug that feeler gauge onto the reference surface of my part. And there we go. So I'm going to retract my tool, set my scale to zero, and come in the same direction towards me by 135 thousandths of an inch positioning the center of my tool directly above my reference surface in Y. So, one full turn, 100, 110, 120, 130, 135 thousandths of an inch. I can visually see that I'm directly above my reference surface so I'm going to re-zero the scale on my y-axis. This axis is set. I can now move the tool to the position of my first hole, always coming in the same direction. Note here that I'm not making a mark because I'm never going to back this axis up. This axis is only going to move in one direction. So my first hole A here is 0.5 of an inch or half inch in Y. So let's do five full turns. That's one, two, three, four, five, and this time I didn't go past. So we're directly above the position for my first hole. There you go. First hole done. Let's move on to hole C. Now hole C is in the same position as far as Y is concerned. It's at half inch in Y and one inch and a half in X. So that means from where I am now, I have to move a full inch. In other words, 10 full turns of the hand wheel. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're in position for drilling our next hole. Okay, second hole completed. For my third hole, in this case hole B, I'm going to have to move my y-axis and my x-axis. Now the y-axis is no problem here because I'm going to be moving the y-axis in the same direction that I set my reference surface at. So there's no slack in the lead screw to consider here. I'm always moving in the same direction. All I have to do is move a half inch further back because my next hole in y is at one inch from my original y reference surface. My x surface though that's another can of beans because I'm going to have to reverse my direction and that's where we're going to have to be very careful. Normally what I do with my x-axis in this situation is back up by six turns or six hundred thousandths of an inch or 0.6 inches and that would be six full turns 
and then come back in the same direction that I've been moving at from the start by one turn to the first zero that I encounter. That would get rid of the play in the lead screw and would put me at one inch from the reference surface that I originally set. But we're just starting out here and I don't want to jump over any steps in this positioning and confuse the issue. So what we're going to do is, seeing as we're going to back up, we're going to use this line that we made at the very start. And I hadn't said why we had done it. Well, now we know. I'm going to come back just past that line. I'm going to line them up and go a little further and then come back to the first zero I see. So let's do that. So I'm going to back the table up until I just come past that mark that I made. So I can see I'm close. There, I'm just past the original mark, just barely. So I'm going to move forward again to find the next zero here. There's zero. And if I look here, I can see that my lines match up. So this is the original reference zero in X. So I've returned to my original zero in X in the direction that I was moving when I set my reference. And that's very important. So now all I have to do to get to my third position would be to move that one inch from my reference surface to the center of that third hole. So that will be 10 full turns on my lead screw. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 in the right direction. My x-axis is positioned for my third hole. Now all I have to do is set my y-axis to do that third hole at one inch from the original reference. Since my tool is already at a half inch from the reference, all I'll have to do is keep moving in the same direction, so towards me, till I get to that one inch. And that will be five full turns further down. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, and five. So I'm positioned for my third hole in X and Y. So let's drill that third hole. Well, there you go. Three holes accurately positioned. Well, well within two thousandths of an inch on the small home mill without a digital readout. Only thing you have to remember is to avoid backing up. And if you do have to back up, well, go past your zero and come back to your mark, always moving in the same direction. So, Robert, I hope that answers your question. And to everyone, happy machining. Thank you.